Well, greetings, faithful followers. This is your old pal, Brother Jack Angry, bringing you another edition of Movie Night Live from the Monastery of Mayhem. Looks like it's just me holding down the fort again today. Uh, the girls are off doing whatever it is they do. I know Inferno's still working on stuff from down below. It's like, I'm beginning to feel a little left out here at the uh, Monastery of Mayhem. I mean, Brother James is off doing, uh, I think he's working somewhere, or trying to dodge yet another bookie, or who the, who the hell knows. I mean, it's like, am I my brother's keeper? Oh, wait a minute. Yes, I am. That's how I got into this mess in the first place. Or maybe it was the other way around. I don't know. It's such a long time ago. Who can say? Well, rather than bringing you the normal bad movie fare and having us make fun of it, we're going to bring you a, some of the unsung heroes of the movie-going experience. Now, here at the Monastery of Mayhem, we're all about uh, bad movies. You know, they're so bad, they're good, some of them, and... You know, we love bringing them to you here at the uh, Monastery of Mayhem. But tonight, let's talk about, as I said, the unsung heroes of your movie-going experience. And if you're as old as Brother Jack, and, you know, that's pretty damn old. Let's face it, my driver's license number begins in hieroglyphics. Okay? That's how long I've been around. You know, it's like, it's, it's pretty sad. I mean, I deal with... Uh, uh, kids at, at my job, I deal with kids telling me what to do. It's like my boss, the pimple cream, isn't even dry on their face. And, you know, they just, they constantly tell me what to do and all this. But in any event, you know, it's like that's neither here nor there. But we're going to talk about, as I said, the unsung heroes of the movie-going experience. And that would be the trailer. Now, come on, people. How many of you take the trailers for granted? You know, we all know that in this day and age, it gives us an extra 20, 25 minutes to get to the movie theater before the main feature starts. And what are trailers nowadays? Trailers nowadays are ads for Pepsi, Taco Bell, McDonald's, um, Remax Real Estate, and what have you. I mean, come on. If I wanted to see that crap, I'd just stay home and watch it on TV. I miss, how many of you are out there, like me, miss the old trailers, you know? Miss the cute little animations, you know? Let's all go to the lobby, let's all go to the lobby, that kind of crap. You know, and how many of you miss the good trailers? I mean, the, uh, the scary movie trailers, the cartoon trailers, the, um, the action-adventure trailers, any number of them. And that's what our show is going to be all about this evening, faithful followers, is the trailer. We're going to show you all kinds of trailers. We're going to show you trailers for good movies like Star Wars, um, The Shawshank Redemption, um, uh, Kansas City Bomber with Raquel Welch. We're going to show you bad trailers, Orgy of the Damned, uh, Castle Freaks, Frankenstein vs. Dracula. Day of the Triffids. We're going to show you trailers that are so bad you'd walk out on them on an airplane. And Brother Jack has on more than one occasion, and let me tell you, that was ugly. It got, kind of got ugly on that one. So, you know, I'm here. I got all, I got all my, uh, I got everything ready to go. I've got the uh, TV warmed up. I've got my little glass of an adult beverage here, and you know, and um, I was going to get some popcorn, but, you know, it's like, that stuff always gives me gas. So we're going to dispense with the popcorn. I've got the remote around here somewhere. Uh, well, let's see, where the hell did I put that damn thing? Oh, well, I'll go, f I'll go find the remote, and we'll get started with the first of the trailers here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shockerama. Enjoy. And remember, if, you got, if you're hungry, the snack bar is just down the hall. So enjoy, and we'll be back at the break. Where the hell did I put that remote? Well, you know, those things really do grow legs and seem to walk away on their own. Hmm. Oh, well, I'll find it in a bit. Joseph Cotton is Baron Frankenstein. Sarah Bay is Lady Frankenstein. Only the monsters she creates can satisfy her strange desires. 
Joseph Cotton is Baron Frankenstein, the scientist who dared to create a monster. Sarah Bay is Lady Frankenstein. She's beautiful, she's evil, and she'll do anything for love. She creates a new, more terrifying monster, and only the monster she creates can satisfy her strange desires. No man can escape her web of terror. There has never been a movie like Lady Frankenstein. Something unspeakably evil is living in this house. Tonight, it must die. I put in a request to have Magdalena exorcised. Beyond the darkness. Don't let me not. A picture that will leave you spellbound. Beyond the darkness. into demonic possession. George, you can help me, George. Take me away from here. Mommy! Mommy! Beyond the door, step inside <laughs> if you dare. Sometimes I can read people's minds. The Night Child. One day, an innocent little girl. One night, something else. Possessed beyond the darkness. Beyond the devil. The Night Child. Rated R. She is Daniela. Possessed with an evil that is older than time itself. An evil that turns her life into a bloody nightmare. The legend of the Wolf Woman. Now you can see Daniela's reincarnation in a true story so brutal, so horrifying, that it was kept from the public for over a century. The legend of the Wolf Woman. Rated R. This man's name is John Austin Frazier. He lived in Chicago, Illinois. He now resides at the State Mental Hospital. We are saddened to tell you that this tragic condition was brought on when Mr. Frazier attended the world premiere of our triple nightmare of horror program, Orgy of the Living Dead. Since this tragic event, the producers of the program have secured an insurance policy, ensuring the sanity of each and every patron. The policy states that in the event you lose your mind as a result of viewing this explosion of terror, you will be provided with free internment in an asylum for the rest of your natural life. Poor John. It's not surprising, though, after all. Murder, mutilation, blood-sucking vampires, living dead maniacs, slashing, rending, devouring the living. It's enough to drive anyone mad. Be sure you're insured before you dare to see Revenge of the Living Dead, Curse of the Living Dead, and Fangs of the Living Dead. Where are you? <laughs> are you sure that Evelyn is really dead? Destroy it. Yes. Alan, I'm waiting for you. faithful followers welcome back what did you think of some of those trailers so far um, I know one of the trailers we're going to be dealing with is going to be a, a trailer for Star Wars it was 
I remember actually seeing that trailer in 1975. I was at a movie theater in Tyson's Corner, Maryland, and I was uh, was was just a a little I was just a little bit of a zombie at that time. And I remember seeing that sitting in my chair with my double-sized popcorn and bladder buster soda, thinking, "Oh yeah," <laughs> drool running down my my cheek and all this and. You know, it's like, and I remember when that movie came out in 1976, yes, I believe it was 76 when that movie came out, uh, from the years 1976 up till 1978, I must have seen that movie about 98 times. Literally, um, you know, I the theater we were running, you they had a deal where you could buy, you could buy one ticket and stay for all, the whole day, and pretty much that's what we did, just sitting through the movie over and over and over and I think in one uh, session we myself and brother James sat through that movie like five times you know and they wondered why our parents were ready to put us into therapy you know it's like you know it's like you had to you had to have your 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 inflatable bladed lightsaber and all of your your Star Wars toys I remember one Christmas was nothing but Star Wars. You know, every gift was a Star Wars gift. I had my little Han Solo blaster. Brother James had his Stormtrooper rifle, you know, and we would always sneak up on Mom and Dad and, you know, assassinate them, and that was always fun. I mean, good memories, good memories. Um, and, you know, everybody, we all had the three-foot Death Star plate, um, uh, Playset, you know, the little Death Star, the little cannon. You had a little garbage chute with a little Dianoga in it and the, the little bits of foam garbage. And, you know, we had all the Star Wars figures. I mean, we had boxes and boxes of them. Even had their little weapons all tucked away in a little plastic bag somewhere. You know, and I was cruising around on eBay thinking to myself, why did I throw that shit out? You know, I was sitting on a gold mine and I didn't even know it. Hell, I even had the first, one of the first radio-controlled R2-D2, you know. It was just, he just rolled around on the floor, his little head spin, and you could make him go forward, backwards, left or right. He was always fun to chase the dog up the hall with it, you know, and the dog, our little Pekingese, would just go crazy and just yap after it and chase it and knock it down and look at, sit there and look at me like, see what I did, <laughs> you know. Yes, those those are good memories. Um, some of the other great trailers in here, I mean, I think they had a trailer for Dawn of the Dead, which is always a great movie. You know, we will be running it, uh, we will be running it here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama. Uh, that'll be happening soon. Uh, hope you caught our coverage of the 2014 Anime Nebraskan Convention. That's a group that had great people, we had a great time, you know, Big, big shout out, two thumbs way, way up for the staff and the management of that convention. They really did a great job with it. I mean, all the uh, the cosplayers, the fan costumes were fantastic, some of the panels. Uh, I had a chance to sit in on a uh, craftsmanship uh, thing for the cosplay. Um, you know, ran into some uh, really great people. Um, you know, met a lot of, met a few local celebrities. Uh, met some of the voiceover actors, you know, great, great, uh, great, uh, really great convention. Really looking forward to next year with that. So we're going to get back to the trailers here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shakarama. Enjoy. In 1968, George Romero brought us Night of the Living Dead. It became the classic horror film of its time. Now, George Romero brings us the most intensely shocking motion picture experience for all times. Dawn of the Dead. Night of the Living Dead has ended. Dawn of the Dead is here. Get that room! It gets up and kills. The people it kills get up and kill. They must be destroyed on sight. When there is no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Dawn of the Dead.
Well, greetings, faithful followers. Welcome back. What did you think of all the tri clips and trailers we showed? Weren't some of those scary? And some of them were funny. And they even had a few for some of the uh, softcore adult uh, films at that time, because this was in that nebulous period in the in the 70s up through like 1980 when the X rating wasn't really clearly defined and there were a lot of ways of getting around it. Um, although some of the films weren't bad, I mean, you know, you had the swinging stewardesses, the swinging uh, candy stripers, the swinging nurses, you know, we had um, the swinging cheerleaders. You know, everybody was swinging during the 70s, and I was, and I missed it, you know, it's like, how the hell does that happen? I don't know. But anyway, faithful followers, the trailers, and let's not forget, and you know, as long as we're on the subject of trailers, let's not forget the great little movies they had. I mean, how many of you remember drive-in movie theaters? This guy... You know, I used to love going to drive-ins, you know, it's like you'd load up the, you'd load up the family, you'd load up about five friends in the trunk, you know, sneak them in. Me and my cousin used to go to the drive-in here in Omaha, it was just over the river in Council Bluffs, it was the, oddly enough, called the Council Bluffs Drive-In. Um, possibly it was the Golden Spike Drive-In, I don't remember, um, but it was the, started out as the Golden Spike and then I think it became the Council Bluffs Drive-In. They were, had this like 13, 14 foot high wall around the back by the screen, you know, and then you had the uh, road going into the thing. Uh, me and my cousin would always go over the fence, go over the, we'd climb the 13, 14 foot wall, sneak in that way, you know, it's just, we didn't want to pay the three dollars to get in, you know, it's like, but then again, you know, you'd have to crawl through. They, the management must have figured it out because the net one year we got through it just fine. The next year, rose bushes, thorn bushes, as far as the eye could see, all the way down the line from one end of the prop, one side of the property to the other, right up against the, the wall. Maybe a space about that far. Anyway, me and my cousin not wanting to pay, although in retrospect, when you spend a week digging thorns out of your ass, the three dollars would have probably been worth it. You know, but, you know, how, hey, we were kids, or we were young, you know, how, and stupid, as opposed to being old and stupid, but, you know, the, how that goes. It was still, we, you know, it's like, power to the people, you know, don't let the man keep you down. Yeah, it's like, I still, I still have scars where I dug a few of those thorns out of a few places I really don't want to talk about, you know, but... It was, I mean, and let's talk about drive-in food. I mean, yeah, if we knew how, if we actually saw it being prepared, we'd probably never eat it, you know, but it just tasted so damn good. I mean, how many of you remember those little, oh, about that long, you know, deep-fried burritos? They were usually bean burritos, and they were deep-fried, and they gave them to you in the little cardboard boat kind of thing. And how many of the, it doesn't matter, I mean, it was just, it was a dollar, and you could put jalapenos on it, or they gave you, or they gave you, you could get the little packets of the hot sauce. Um, I'm sorry, it's like being a, a, a post post pubescent adolescent. How many of you thought that was just the greatest shit under the sun? You know, it's like it was just like the greatest food that there ever was. And and uh, drive-in hamburgers, drive-in hot dogs, nachos. You know, they had that little. You had got your little packet of nachos, which is usually about five or six little round tortilla chips, and you put them in a little cardboard uh, holder, and then you pump that. Well, they say it was cheese sauce, but I sincerely doubt there was anything in there that was found in nature. I mean, it read like the side of the package read like a chemistry lesson, but who gave a shit? It was still damn good, and it was hot. You know, you pump four or five squirts of that on your on your chips and throw a few jalapenos on them. You get back to the car, you'd eat it, and then you'd want to go back to the snack bar again, and usually your parents or your aunt and uncle would get pissed off at you because you was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You know, you didn't even remember what the movie was about. Hell, I don't even think you saw half the movie, but because you was going back and forth to the damn snack bar or to the uh, little play area they had right up in front of the screen, you know? 
And uh, does anyone else remember cruising the back row, you know, trying to see, you know, people going humpity bumpity in their cars, you know? You walk by and see a car with its window fogged up and everybody walk by, snicker and point, because we all knew what they was doing, you know? They was doing the humpty dance, yeah. And how many of us got lucky in the back seat of a car at a drive-in movie? You know, I, I see you out there. Yeah, you got you. I see you sitting next to your wife, going uh huh, uh huh, or sitting there with a big dumb smile on your face, and your wife has no idea what the fuck you're doing. Yeah, well, that's right. You know, memories. Gotta love them. But yeah, the uh, the drive-in movies. Uh, even the theaters, you know, when they had the previews of coming attractions, they had those funky little uh, musical interludes right before the uh, the um, the re trailer reel would start, you know. And then at the drive-in, right before the main show would start, you would have that. They'd have the uh, do the like the coming attractions. Then they'd have. Uh, the main feature, and then they'd have that eight or ten minute intermission, and they'd be running that little film on the screen, you know, telling people to go to the snack bar, and you, you do realize there were subliminal messages hidden in that stuff to make you hungry and make you want to go to the snack bar. Um, you was all being, we was all being mind controlled at that time, those bastards. Anyway, but they have, the show will start in eight minutes, and it would count down until you get to that last minute, and then they'd flash up the message with the big fanfare, on with the show, and all that, you know, and then the next feature would start, and it would usually be a crappier movie than the first one was. I remember I saw, I went to a drive-in with Brother James and our cousin, God rest his soul, anyway... Um, we have, the first thing we saw was, the main feature was heavy metal. This was in like 1981, 1982. And I remember seeing that on the screen, and my favorite bit in that movie was the one uh, with, uh, that was drawn by Richard Corbin. It was de called Den, and it had John Candy playing Den, and you know, they had the Queen, and I don't remember who voiced her, but you know, she had the big hoo-hahs, and you know, and then they did the, uh, Basically, they Dan was walking around with his dork hanging out and all that, and you know, and they had the great music. I mean, they had uh, Radar Rider, they had uh, Don Henley singing, uh, Don Henley singing uh, heavy metal. Um, they had uh, Blue Oyster Cult, Veterans of the Psychic Wars. You know, I love that song, you know, I still have that on, I think I got that as a ringtone somewhere, you know, just a really, really great song, you know, and every time I see that film, I'm thinking of my good buddy, Mike, who's a teacher over in China right now, you know, hey, Mike, how's it going? I'll be dropping you an email, um, I'll be dropping you an email here, and, um, you know, trailers, I mean, they're part of really what makes the movie's worth going to see. I mean, it's part of the experience. And sadly enough, with drive-in theaters pretty much going the way of the dodo, I only think there's maybe 40 drive-in theaters left in the entire country. And which is sad. I mean, that's a that's a a, a, a giant part of Americana right there, people. Um, it should be a shame to let those go away in these areas in this era of the internet streaming movies, downloads, um, and all this. I mean, get out and support your local movie, neighborhood movie theaters. You know, because you can, yeah, you could download it, sit in your favorite comfy chair, have your little, uh, your little adult beverage right here. Uh, you can, um, you can sit there in the comfort of your own home. You can have a pizza cooking in the kitchen, but it's just not the same as going to a regular movie theater, sitting in that big dark auditorium, staring at that screen, letting it take you to God knows where. Um, it could take you to the farthest reaches of space. It could take you to uh, the deepest jungles where you're fighting aliens and predators. Uh, it could take you to a haunted house where you're running from a slasher. That was what was great about theaters, is that they could take you anywhere. You, there was no limit to what you could imagine sitting there in that theater. Well, uh, as I said, drive-in theaters, you know, they're, they, uh, you could go anywhere in 
watch sitting in the, the front seat of your car at a drive-in or watching a, a movie at the theater. Um, and there's such, such a great part of America. I mean, it, it's just, it's really sad the way, that the, the way theaters are going and the way their routes are going and all of this. So get out and support your local movie theaters. If you're lucky enough to have a drive-in theater in your area and it's open, if it's open all year round, patronize them. Load up the family uh, in the fir uh, you know, buy a pizza or something or get something from the snack bar, but use, use the drive-in theaters, use your local movie theaters. Don't let them disappear. I mean, because when they do, believe me, uh, if you're anything like Brother Jack, you're going to miss them. You're going to miss them when they're gone. Now, next week, we're going to bring you a really great movie called Ice Pirates, starring um, Robert, uh, starring Robert Urich and Mary Crosby and John Carradine. Uh, this is a story of a group of, uh, well, it's a set in the far, far future in a different galaxy, yada, yada, yada. We all know the drill. A group of uh, courageous pirates fights the evil Templar Empire to capture the galaxy's only remaining thing of value, and that's water, people. And they, uh, they use it to look for the seventh water world, uh, the other six being destroyed, some crap like that. But, I mean, it's not a bad... It was a 19... Uh, it was a 1982... Uh, movie. It was designed to be, uh, it was actually designed to be one of the many Star Wars ripoffs that was being cranked out uh, from the period of like 1977 through like 1985. Um, it was a low budget film, but it was still a re really great kind of farcical romp. Kind of, it was kind of a parody of adventure films and of space operas and all this. And we're bringing it to you next week here on the Angry Brothers Omaha Shockerama. Enjoy.